Hi everyone and welcome back to Googie's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name's Alexis and today I want to share with you how to make my delicious chicken korma. As I just mentioned today I want to share with you how to make my delicious chicken korma. Now this recipe is really easy to do and it's also packed full of flavour as well. When I used to eat processed foods and sugars I used to love getting a takeaway curry but nowadays I don't tend to do that anymore. In fact I don't do it at all. I actually prefer making my own curries and I really like making everything from scratch as well. So in this recipe I'm going to to show you how to make a korma sauce which is really delicious. So here is how to make my delicious chicken korma. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my sauce for the korma. So for this I have um, two garlic cloves peeled which I'm just going to put in the bottom of my Nutribullet cup and then I have half a red chilli that I've also peeled and uh, just chopped up and taken the seeds out of. So I'm going to put that in and I have a one inch piece of ginger as well which I'm going to put in and then I have about a hundred grams of cashew nuts which I'm then going to pour into and then I also have one teaspoon of cumin seeds as well and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about 500 mils of coconut milk to that as well and that's basically the sauce for the korma and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend all of these ingredients together. So I've blended the ingredients together until everything is lovely and smooth and I'm just going to set this aside now. So now I've put my faithful old pan I'm going to, on the hob and I'm going to put this onto a high heat and I'm going to let this heat up and while it's heating up I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the base of the pan, probably about a tablespoon, a teaspoon or two and then I'm going to spread the oil around the base of the pan with my blast plastic brush and I'm just going to make sure it's all evenly coated and as I said I'm going to let this heat up now. So the base of my pan is sizzling away nicely now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two garlic cloves that I've just peeled and sliced. Now in the original recipe um, I've said to use a spring, some spring onions but my son actually can't have onions at the moment. We've taken them to the homeopath and she says that onions aren't very good for him at the moment. So I'm only using garlic in this, there are no onions, but in the original recipe there were onions in this as well. So if you want to add spring onions at the beginning you're more than welcome to. So now I'm just going to fry the garlic off until it starts to soften. So the garlic has started to soften beautifully now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in one courgette that I have peeled and diced. So I'm just going to add that in and then I've got one red pepper that I've also just sliced and then diced. Um, so I'm just going to add those in and then I've got probably about 200 grams of butternut squash as well that I have peeled and diced as well. So I've probably diced it to about a centimetre thick each piece and I'm just going to put these into the base of my pan as well. And in the original recipe it does also call for a carrot as well. Um, so if you want to add carrot to it then you can. Again unfortunately my son can't eat carrots either at the moment so I've got to leave those out of recipes as well. But I'm sure it's still going to taste as nice with all of these ingredients in. So now I'm going to fry these until everything sort of starts to soften as well. So now I'm going to add my spice to this as well. So I have a teaspoon of mild curry powder that I'm going to add. And then I have a teaspoon of ginger as well. So I'm just going to add that as well. I'm actually going to turn the heat down as well a little bit because it does seem to be getting quite hot. I'm just going to give those a stir around. And then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of turmeric as well. Oh, I can really smell those spices now. 
Um, and then I'm going to add a teaspoon of ground coriander to that as well. And then I have half a teaspoon of ground sweet cinnamon as well that I want to add. I'm just going to add a half a teaspoon of that. And that's just to add a little sweetness to it. We do buy ground sweet cinnamon, but you can use ground cinnamon if you can't get the sweet stuff in the supermarket at the moment. So yes, I'm now going to just stir these round for a further few minutes. Now I'm going to add my sauce to the vegetables and you might be wondering where's the chicken? Well I'm actually using leftover chicken so I'm going to add it in right at the end just to heat it through but if you wanted to use like chicken breasts just chop them up and add them in when you fry off the onions and the garlic and then you can add the vegetables in as well. And I'm also going to add in now um, chicken stock. So I've got about 500 mils of chicken stock there as well. And I'm just gonna bring all of this to the boil and then I'm gonna leave it to simmer until all the vegetables are really lovely and tender. So yes, and I'm going to boil some rice now as well. So my rice is almost boiled now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper because I forgot to do this earlier to the korma now. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit because it's already quite spicy so it doesn't need any um, too much pepper in it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to now add my cooked chicken in. So I have about 500 grams of cooked chicken. So this is from a roast dinner we had on Sunday. So I'm going to add this in now. And then I'm going to add in some chopped coriander as well. And I'm also going to add in a couple of handfuls of spinach as well. And then I'm just going to let the spinach wilt down and the coriander mix in and I'm just going to mix everything together as well and that once the rice rice is boiled is our dinner done and I'm going to serve this with some quinoa peshwari bread so um, I made a quinoa pesh Peshwari bread and that video I will link in the description box below for you but it is absolutely delicious as well so please go check out that video too and that as I said is our dinner done so that's how you make my delicious chicken korma and that recipe I will leave in the description box below for you and as I mentioned earlier I'm going to be having this with my quinoa peshwari bread and I'll leave the recipe for that and the video in the description box below too so that's it from me thank you so much for watching please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please feel free to leave any comments below and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button see you all soon bye